While asking around about any recent Cayman sightings, I'm told fishermen recently lassoed a giant. It's now being held as a research facility, which might give me the access I need to test whether Caymans could cause so much carnage in one night. So it was captured in an area where, where people live, where people get in the water, they wash, they wash their clothes and whatever. It's a big animal. It's about 13 and a half foot long. It's over 500 pounds in weight. When they got it here, they discovered that it was actually blind in one eye. This is probably why the fisherman was able to, to lasso it. It's going to stay here for a little while, and then it's going to be released. It's going to be released in a reserve where it's not going to come and uh, bother people on the waterfront. There's no doubt caimans attack humans. But how would they account for the huge number of missing passengers? Either there was a massive number of caimans at Obidos that night, or each predatory reptile was taking down one passenger after another. To test the multiple victim theory, I'm under the supervision of a reptile vet, and I'm scaling up my line and bait big time to trigger a first strike. its undivided attention. But I'm just trying to see how motivated it is to hang on to that meal. I've used pig as bait, as I'm told its flesh tastes very similar to human. I don't think that's a grip that's very easily broken. This beast's instinct is to hold on to its prey at all costs. Why would they risk losing a catch by attacking multiple people in a matter of minutes? time to cut and run and find out about the other theory. I'm feeling massively undergunned. All I have to pull in this giant is a thin rod and a wobbly canoe. That's the fish there. I'm trying to stop the fish coming to the surface. If it jumps, it could spit out the hook. But it seems the fish is calling the shots. Fish, heavy fish, heavy fish. Rod in a painful curve, painful curve. As the fish comes closer, the danger becomes very real. If it jumps in our direction, the results could be deadly. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. It's going to jump, it's going to jump, it's going to jump. It's going to jump. It's going to jump. This is a lot bigger than any arapaima I've caught before. I need to get it into the shallows. In a bit more, please. This fish weighs at least 250 pounds. Keep holding, because I'm... Ah! Ah! Look at this! Arapaima on a fly. This thing... This... It's actually... I was going to say, it's built like a missile. This is a tired fish, believe it or not. Two of us can hardly restrain it. Uh, it, it is just, doesn't it look like a missile? Long, streamlined body. I'm thinking about three times the size of the one that hit me. Sent me flying, left me in pain for over a month. This thing came flying at you. 
hit you in the right place, shall we say the wrong place, uh, you wouldn't know about it. Just a final flashing, fleeting moment and then lights out for good. I think that's a strong fish. And this is the biggest fish of my South American fishing career. A river monster as deadly as any beast of folklore. And if you caught a glimpse of something this size, color, and shape appearing on the edge of your vision, your mind could fill in the gaps. I'm just going to take up slack on here. I think I'm going to put that down until something decisive happens. That's more serious. This time, I have no doubt about what's on my line. That's gone solid. Harness around my waist. Go get that away, please. Neville! That light on my face is a pain in the arse, I'm sorry. Whoa! That's a loud laugh. It's a loud laugh. This gear is designed for the heaviest ocean giants. But is it strong enough? It's round a rock. I'm using thick monofilament line for just this reason. But it's being tested to its limit. I can't let that line break. Can I get that away, please? We need to be careful with this. That's good. It's out of the rock, whatever it was. But this fight is not over yet. The fish is nowhere near tied yet. Neville! We want the rope, please. There it is. Just be very careful, Neville. The fish could kick off, even though it's like this. Because uh, we got me around the waist. It's an unbelievably muscular animal, built for speed and power. What I might try and do is get that hook out first. And there's its signature weapon, that enormous mouth. It's got a, a bit of a bite. I want to bring it somewhere where the, it can't if it kicks. It's not sloping down. I have to work quickly to remove the hook. Good. And measure this enormous beast. I don't want it to be out of the water any longer than absolutely necessary. Right, in inches. And girth in front of the dorsal fin is 50. I'm having to use scales designed for lifting concrete blocks. Okay, lift, lift, lift. Oh. Oh. 258, 256, 257, 254.6. I think, guys, you can put it down. So that's a 250 pound fish. My whole life, I've longed for this moment. Ah. <laughs> oh, only just starting to be able to think straight. This is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. This, I'm going to remember. Um, <laughs> the size of this fish and just the drama of getting it in. What a beast this is. Lift! Ah. Ah. Well, I came here with a very simple question I wanted to answer. Can these fish grow big enough to be potentially dangerous to humans? Can they even engulf a small human? And uh, I'd heard stories. President Roosevelt's account inspired me to look for one. He never actually saw one, but here it is. 
This moment is actually very short for us. I think it's got to go back in and we'll let it swim back down into the depths. Ooh. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.